Okay, we've probably uh, just finished up recently going through the Mission Impossible lab, and you had a bunch of reactions to look at on the spot plates. I'm going to run through two of the examples of you writing the net ionic equations. Uh, the first example I'm going to use is a metal, and one of the more difficult ones uh, being a weak acid. So I'm going to look at acetic acid, which is a weak acid, which means we keep it together. Unlike uh, hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid, those uh, dissolve or dissociate completely in a solution, where acetic acid will stay together. It's a weak acid, so it doesn't dissociate. Um, it stays together until, of course, it reacts. Um, and I'm going to pick a metal, um, we'll just go with iron. And then the fact that we say that it is a reaction, metals and acids will react, and you will get, uh, usually, and you will get um, bubbles forming. And those bubbles, for the metal and an acid, the bubbles are hydrogen gas. So that is the evidence that you're seeing with your reaction. So I'm going to write hydrogen gas. And then everything else is looking at this reaction. OK, uh, the metal, when they react with acids, they become oxidized, which means they lose electrons and become positive. In this case, um, it's iron 2 plus. And then the remainder of the acid, losing the hydrogen ion, becomes acetate ion. So that's the full reaction of everything involved here. Now, as far as doing a net ionic equation, I'm looking to see, OK, what do I have that is the same on both sides that I could get rid of? And in this particular example, there's nothing. Iron is different because here it is a solid, and here it is aqueous. So that's different. It's gone through a chemical change. It's lost electrons. Um, here we have the acid together. And I can write aqueous. And of course, this is the acid after it is lost. The hydrogen ion has become acetate. So acetic acid becomes acetate ion. And then, of course, you have hydrogen gas. There's nothing I can get rid of here. Um, a different type of a reaction um, I could do is I'm not going to write one up here, but if I had HCl or sulfuric acid, as I mentioned earlier, they would be dissociated in a net ionic. And then if I have the same thing on both sides, for example, Cl, that would cancel out and I would include it. I would not include it in the overall net ionic equation. Now, another example I could do, um, let's do the calcium carbonate. This is a little bit of a tricky one. That was the white powderish stuff, calcium carbonate. And we'll mix this one up with uh, sulfuric acid. So I'm just writing the whole thing out, and then we can break it apart as we're going through. So having these two together, and then looking at what I saw, I also saw some bubbles here. Now, before I break it down too much, I'll do that in a moment. I'm going to write as far as kind of doing a little switch here. <clears throat> One of the things you get is H2CO3, which is called carbonic acid. And then the other things that are kind of laying around here. So one of them is sulfate ion after the strong acid is given away its two hydrogens, and then some calcium ions. OK, now uh, let's break this down a little bit and see who and what we have. The solid I have to keep, so calcium carbonate solid stays. Sulfuric acid I'm going to break apart. So there's two hydrogen ions that come from sulfuric acid, and then there's the sulfate ion, and these are both aqueous. And then over here, uh, carbonic acid, we could lead this way and say aqueous, but uh, in this room at atmospheric pressure, it's not stable. It breaks apart, just like in pop. Um, you can see those bubbles, that's because it's carbonic acid breaking down. And what it's going to break down to is carbon dioxide and water. I'm going to write both of those out. Carbon dioxide gas and H2O liquid. 
and then everything else is going to stay the same. Sulfuric, or I'm sorry, sulfate ions and some calcium ions. Okay. Now I look at this and say, is there anything that's like a repeat on one side and the other? And I can see one thing on there that is the same, this sulfate ion. So I would not include that in my net ionic equation because it's not reacting. It's just present, a spectator on the left side and then on the right side. So it's not involved in the reaction. So I want to get rid of that. So I'm not going to rewrite this whole thing for, uh, for us, but I am going to remove it to show you what would be the net ionic equation. So just to kind of state what we have here, you just calcium carbonate solid reacting with an acid. And it forms, I see the carbon dioxide bubbles forming. Water just is. I have more of it. And then I have some calcium ions hanging out in solution. So really, it just becomes like a clearer solution if it goes all the way to completion. I just have a calcium solution when it's done after this goes through the process of reacting with the acid. There we go. That's two of the examples, and you have many more um, within the lab, too. All done.